Celebrities, big names. Tonight, only one survives. Big Reed, shooting stars, now gunning for robots and hoping to bring the animal out of Shauna Lowry. Beauty against the Beast, the Turners, Wendy and Anthea against former boxing champion Chris Eubank. The battle of the boy band, Shane Lynch from Boy's Own, alone against all those boys from Five. And it's crunch time at EastEnders, Adam Woodgett, Ian Beale against Natalie Cassidy, Sonia. Ready to do battle on Celebrity Robot Wars! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the man they're calling General Mayhem, Craig Charles. Welcome to Robot Wars, the biggest, baddest, most brutal display of sheer metal carnage in the world ever. And tonight, it's double the trouble with our celebrity special. So what's it all about? Well, if you're a regular viewer of Robot Wars, you'll be no stranger to our very own brand of want and destruction. <laughs> premeditated violence <laughs> and outright aggression. Of course, you may have settled down to watch something very pleasant with Robson Green. Then prepare to be knocked off the sofa. And to educate all you first-timers, we've enlisted the help of boy bands, soap stars and a whole host of beautiful people who should know better but don't. And to see how they're handling themselves with a spanner and several pints of industrial lubricant, let's join Julia Reed in the pits. Here in the pits, we have some of the most salubrious names in showbiz, all preparing to do battle. <laughs> <laughs> Our celebs have teamed up with some of the genuine roboteers from the wars, and they're having what might be called now a crash course in roboteering. Now, the roboteers' own time and money has gone into designing these machines, and uh, handing them over to complete novices could be brave, could be completely crazy. We shall see. They might be famous, but can they drive their mechanised robots to robot superstardom? Well, that's the question, Julia, and we're here to find out. OK, Robot Wars works like this. Each of our eight celebrity teams will go head-to-head -head in the most vicious knockout competition ever, and whoever survives through to the end will be crowned our Robot Wars Celebrity Champion. The aim of the game is to immobilise your opponents, because this show, it's not who you are that counts, but who you bash the living daylights out of. And although the battles will be between the rich and the famous, the real stars of Robot Wars don't have agents, but they do have attitudes. Please welcome the ultimate mechanical menace, the House Robots. Yes, Craig, our House Robots lie in wait in the four corner patrol zones, otherwise known as the CPZs. They are... Dead metal with a 3,000 RPM serrating saw. Shunt as strong as an ox with a powerful diamond-edged axe. Matilda, fearsome with her tusks of steel and chainsaw tail. Sergeant Bash, the sergeant carries an awesome flamethrower and a devastating set of pincers. And Sir Killalot, the big daddy of them all. Sir Killalot has a deadly lance and hydraulic cutters. Now, the house robots are virtually invincible. If a competitor's robot is foolish enough to strand in one of those four CPZs, he could be sliced by Matilda, torched by Bash, crushed by Killalot. Tossed, trampled, twisted, torn. The arena too has its perils. The flames of fury for mechanical meltdown. The evil ejector to send you head over heels, but not in love. And the pit of oblivion to carry beaten roboteers down and out of the competition. Celebrities, take on these hazards and our house robots at your peril. And just in case any of our celebrities think they can get away with a few underhand tactics, then RefBot is here, and he's going to be laying down the law in no uncertain terms. OK, enough talk. It's time to trash, as we join our very own Motormouth in the commentary box. With tonight's battle lineup. here's Jonathan Pearce. Thanks, Craig. Coming up, we've got the Battle of EastEnders, the Battle of the Boy Bands. We've got Braun against Beauty, Chris Eubank against the Turner Sisters, but first, Shauna Lowry with a robot called Wild Thing against Vic Reeves, his daughter Alice, and a robot called Dear Tor. Hi, I'm Vic Reeves, Britain's foremost roboteer. 
And here are Zulu and Pete. Uh, and this, of course, is Deator, the most powerful robot here today. Take us, uh, take us through it. Tell us about it, lads. Well, we have this specially devoyous frying pan, which is coated with the latest technology and non-stick capability. And what we'll do is we'll bring this down, fill it up with pancakes, and fire them at the other robots, and they'll never get away. And also, just in case they're not interested in pancakes for some reason, we can dazzle them with surprise when we do this. <laughs> Guess who? It's me, the real Sean O'Leary, and I'm with the Wild Thing team. Check out this one. The robot it is fantastic. Nick, Jake and Isabel, the Adams family, have been working hard on this one. As you can see, it's very, very lifelike. We've got the Muttley crew, the animals. We've got the lottery balls to bring us luck. And this robot is very, very fast. And you know what? It's very vicious as well. Look at that. Check out that spike. I think Vic Reeves and his team better watch out because even if they come over and flip us, we can flip ourselves, we can ride ourselves back. So uh, they're in big trouble, basically. Mr Vic Reeves. Hello, can you just, uh, uh, just a second? Just as a final adjustment, i just got to do that <laughs> in that area that apparently brings good luck to uh, engines and motors and things like that. Now, we've got you down as our technical celeb. Yes, right, yeah, yeah. Because you've got an apprenticeship in engineering, haven't you? I have, yes. And has he brought any valuable information to the team, boys, Sulu? Not one bit. He brought his child, so we're actually thinking of swapping him for her for a driver. Because <laughs> she's better. And what have we got in the pan here? There's Shauna's well, bunny's head. Yeah, we we, uh, we next we actually decapitated one of the bunnies. We've got some soft buns <laughs> to throw them. Mm, <laughs> yummy. It's our secret weapon. Our secret weapon is the Chelsea bottle. Now you might have thought this lady was a gentle, caring, animal-loving type. What are you going to do to Vic Reeves? Uh -huh. Annihilate. That's exactly. what we're going to do. But sure. look, he's already sabotaged our robot. What's he done? They've cut the head of one of our bunnies <gasps> and turned it into me. Have you got tactics, young lady? Tactics? Well, we're faster than they are, and we can flip. We can do all sorts of things. Yes, you can. Yeah. We've seen this spike in action before. It Absolutely. is awesome. Yeah. So I reckon we'll, we'll be able to get away quickly, but we'll also be able to attack quicker. All righty. This is it, folks. Fighting time. Let the wars begin! Please welcome Sean O'Leary and the Wild Big Team. They can make our hearts sing with an electric powered lifting arm and a lance, which can also write this machine when toppled. We call that a Shremek, a self writing mechanism. Please welcome Vic Reeves and the Deertor team. Electric powered motors again here on this robot from Dublin. A zero turning circle is very important. The weapon is a lifting spike arm with added animal heads and food. Run, rabbit, run, rabbit, bun, bun, bun. Roboteers, stand by. There's Wild Thing with Sean at the controls. She has to control the robot for a minute as does Vic Reeves. After the minute, they can give up the controls to one of the experts if they want. Here we go, then. The object is to immobilise your opponents if you can. Oh, what happened there? Oh! I think one of the additions has come off. Diotor, there goes the frying pan. There goes the rabbit head. There goes the pancake. Who'll be flattened now for the rest of this battle? Shauna at the controls of Wild Thing. Vic Reeves, of course, with Diotor. Diotor is on fire! That polka dot design may look natty, but it's flammable, and you don't see too many robots in Robot Wars with a flammable design. And at the moment, the bunnies on top of Wild Thing are hopping. Oh, oh no. your glasses are going. Oh, and your phone is going. All right, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. Diotor and Vic have lost their glasses. It's all going wrong for them, and Diotor being pushed across the arena floor. Don't forget, you've got the Pit of Oblivion, you've got the CPZ. Yeah, Once the robot's pushed into there, the house robots can come out to play, like Sergeant Bash at the bottom of your picture, there with the flame torch. And Wild Thing getting into a little bit of trouble there, with Sean at the controls, there's Vic still demanding the controls of Diotor. Oh, I'm 
And Shorter gets up the controls now, and they got him taking over because Wild Thing is in trouble. The bunnies are on fire. In comes Dead Metal. I can't chase oh. Bunny. Get him out of it. Oh, don't do me there. Matilda no, there no, with the tusks no, no, no. on Wild Thing. A lick of flame from Sergeant Bash on to Deotor. And I wonder if Peter Redman or Kieran Byrne will take controls of the Dublin machine. Oh, Wild Thing being picked up by Killalot. Killalot's weapons are actually fashioned from the jaws of life used by emergency services to rescue people. But to cause doom and destruction to robots. <laughs> Shauna Lowry's wild thing has been tamed. Is that the smell of burning fair? No, it's the smell of victorious Vic Reeves! <laughs> it's the lad. Well... All right. Uh, well, well done. done. Uh, well done. How difficult oh. was that? It was the heist robot that got us in the end. It wasn't there. We were just chasing you around, weren't we? No, absolutely. You were playing safe. <laughs> How dare you, madam? But you did an awful lot of the driving yourself, and you drove. I did it all myself. Yeah, I was chasing around. I was in pursuit, and then I took on the might of the Roman Empire. Yeah. Well, you're through. You're through to the next I round. I know, and I can hardly believe it, Craig. I'm just so happy. Let's hear it for Vic Reeves and the Ocho. <laughs> Shauna. With all your experience, do you think you could nurse that bunny oh, back to health? Look at this poor little thing. It needs to go to the robot hospital. It, it does, needs doesn't help. It? There was so Terribly. much mess and fur and everything. That I mean, it was very difficult to tell what was going you know, on. The final insult was whenever it went into that pit. You know, so kill a lot. Just went right. That's it, girl. You are going down. Oh. Hand took some damage. <laughs> And you torched their bunnies, didn't you? We did, we torched... I don't know what we did, just, like, a, a, an intense a collection of skills amalgamating to make one of the most clinically um, operated um, battles in history. Ah, a strategic victory for Vic, then. Shauna has gone, still to come the Battle of the Boy Bands, but next up, Braun against Beauty. We're the Gemini team, Anthea, Wendy, Shane, wow. Brian right. and Daryl, and this is our baby. This is the cluster bot which means it goes into the arena as one, but it comes out as two, which means double the trouble, which could be said about us. This is the Killatron team. I'm Chris Eubank, they're my team. They're going to be doing the roboteering. I'm going to be doing the technical movement. I have my axe with my glove. I have my little gloves, 10 inch, sorry, 10 ounce gloves to the side. And, uh, well, if we can't do it with the machine, I'll have to do it with my fist. The Turner Sisters and Gemini. Hello there. Hello. Hello. It's an appropriate name, isn't it? Because I just found out that you are actually both Gemini. Yes. Yeah, that's uncanny, and apparently they didn't know that when, obviously, they chose the name for these characters. Exactly. So are we going to see the ferocious side of the lovely Turner Sisters out there in the arena? Oh, the twin yes. personalities. Or the heavenly twins, I'm not sure. Mm, not mm -hmm. too heavenly. We want battle, ladies. No, we're going out there to win. Exactly. Yeah, we're not messing around here. Chris and the Killatron team. Now, Chris, I want to know, when you punch, how many tonnes of pressure is that, roughly? Well, you're punching with your body weight, and uh, the technique delivers about four tonnes of worth of pressure. Four tonnes of pressure four tons, for yeah. a middleweight fighter. Now, how many tonnes of pressure do you think that can come down on you with? Probably two tonnes. One tonne. You're kidding me. You are four times more powerful. Forget the robot, we'll have Chris. Yeah. Welcome Anthea and Wendy Turner with the Gemini team. A unique and brilliant innovation, the cluster bot will split into two machines on entering the fray. Fiberglass shells, pneumatic flippers, the power comes from four wheelchair motors. Please welcome Chris Eubank and the Killatron team. And the boxing gloves and the big axe, a two 24 volt battery driven machine. Quick at 15 miles an hour, heavy at 80 kilos, big at roughly four feet by four, genuine contenders. Roboteers, stand by. Gemini, now Anthea started her career reading local traffic reports. Could help her steer away from danger. There's Killatron 
with Chris Eubank, former Three, world middleweight champion two, and super middleweight champion. Activate. The man packs a punch, so does his robot. Now you see Gemini splitting the clusterbot theory. But let me tell you, if one half of Gemini is immobilized, the whole machine is counted yes, out. Yes. A little arm flipper of Gemini. You can hear the turners, the girls squealing in delight. You can see there Richard Broad trying to get control, perhaps, of Kinetron back from Chris. It's ill advised. Kinetron smacking down with the boxing glove. Unbelievable, isn't it? Chris hacks a punch four times bigger than Kinetron, but not as big as the Turner girls. Look at that, with also Matilda coming into the fray, and Kinetron flipped up and over. We're just going to have to wait, but that's going to be finished. Stop. No. Hang on. Do this slowly. Why are we moving? Yeah, we might run out now. Have we done it? Yes! Yes! Chris Eubank. I can't move. And there he is, with the boxing glove on fire, I yes. think, of Kinetron. There's one half of Gemini. Are they sisters of mercy? That's not so bad. Well, I think Matilda's got hold of the Kinetron glove and Matilda's toppled by Gemini. But the glove is shredded, the glove is also on fire. Look at this, Gemini flipping Matilda, but the glove is on fire. Kinetron in major, major trouble. This is Killalot coming in, and Sir Killalot helped out a fellow house robot. The Kinetron is on fire. Get rid of the wings. I think the Turners have won! On oh, the rematch! <laughs> Will he get that rematch? We'll wait and see. Meanwhile, the ref got in there with his fire extinguisher to mop up. Well, what a spectacular fight! I wouldn't like to call it, so we're going to have to go to the judges. Although Chris Eubank does know where they live. These are our judges, Greg, Professor Noel Sharkey, Head of Computer Science at the University of Sheffield and Director of the Creative Robotics Unit at Magna. Martin Smith, head of the Mobile Robotics Research Unit at the University of East London and chairman of the Cybernetic Society. And Dr Myra Wilson, head of Intelligent Robotics and Computer Science at the University of Wales, Aberystwyth. And these are the key moments they'll be reviewing right now. Have a look at the tenacity of the Turner girls straight from the start. Attacking Chris Eubank and Kinetron, trying to flick it up and over. Kinetron with a glove, of course, that caused problems later on for Chris when it caught fire. Gemini did more of the attacking for me. The judges have gone for Gemini in the third assist. This is not fair. What do you think? I mean, look, this was a this was a setup, man. I mean, listen, I can't go down. There should be a rematch here. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, will you back me on the fix? Fix. Fix! 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 Calm down! Fix! I'll give you a right hand in a minute. All right, calm down. Have you enjoyed it, Chris? Fantastic. It's First half. been great, haven't you? Let me get one more cuddle from this lady. Oh! oh. <laughs> it's a family show, Mr. Eubank. <laughs> What's he like? You're through. I know, I can't believe it. And I can't believe the tension, the excitement. However much you look at these models out there, we went into a little practice ring, yeah. nothing is like what it is out here. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the Turner sisters. Thank you. Well done, guys. I have to say, I just don't think you had it in you when it came to the robot. I think the power is at the end of your fist, but not at the end of your remote control. Let me tell you what, I mean, I was winning this match. They, they... It was, it was like me and Steve Collins. They should never have won. <laughs> yes, but it's a KO for Chris. Coming up, Wolford's finest. But next, the battle of the boy bands. Right then. Well, this is our boy. This is Disco Inferno, made by our colleagues here. Genius is Mark Oliver and Nick. And uh, as you can see, it's a fine machine indeed. Yes. The, the secret weapon, it's not a secret, is this disc with these blades. And we're going to trounce all the competition and we're going to win. And you're going to see us win. And like this before, if we don't, we're going to go in with the chisels and we'll do it <laughs> manually. How's it going? I'm Shane Lynch. And I'm here with the bad boy team. Boy, it's our chrome a lot. So you're the main man when it comes to drills. Yeah, I'll do the weapons. Hopefully we should be able to get them somewhere in the side, perhaps drill a couple of holes, do as much damage as possible. Destruction, we love it. If I get into trouble with the driving, you've got a main man I'll to help I'll certainly help you there. If we get flipped over, this device on the top will flip us back again. We hope. Let's go kick some. <laughs> 
Dave's going in first, aren't you? Your weapons. Yeah. What's your tactics, man? Use my weapons to its best capability. Ooh. You always do that, do and uh, Sir Cromelot's your opponent. Oh, me. Now, I'd like you to explain okay. something to me, young man. Mm -hmm. I saw you greasing up their wheels earlier under the bench. No, you see, you've got it all wrong what happened, right? I was greasing, like, my hands up and everything, and I was walking along, abs tripped me up, and I slipped and my hand just went onto the wheel, <laughs> and that's what you saw. It's very telling, that, isn't it? Well, uh, let's go and have a word with them, shall we? Yeah, but Nish said about the tyres, eh? Shame. They're a feisty lot, those five. You reckon? And you're all on your lonesome. It's not really fair, is it? Definitely not on me lonesome. Take the two boys out, you know what I mean? Respect. Hey, I tell you what, this is a team and a half, this is. The only reason they need more players is because they ain't as good as us. This, I might add, is a professional racing driver. So we've got our money on you for the best driver of the day. Have you? No, oh, certainly we do. Oh, God, under pressure already. It's time for some real smash hits as we let the battle of the boy bands begin! Please welcome Shane Lynch and the Sir Cromelot team. This night of the arena has an 18-inch long rotating drill, a cutter at either end made of stainless steel, a writing mechanism and at 80.3 kilos has heavyweight hopes. Please welcome nice. the Disco Inferno team. <laughs> Plenty of electric power. Three 750-watt motors to shake the body down. It can strut its funky stuff upside down. And the two blades will give you plenty of Saturday night fever. Roboteers, stand by. That's a chromalot shell. Comes from an American truck wheel hub. Don't forget, Shane is a rally driver. And Disco Inferno with uh, the lads from Five, Abs, Jay, Sean and Richie. No Scott, One. sadly, he couldn't be here. And Shane from Boyzone's rallying experience, he actually pranged two rally cars in one series. Get it on, get it on, Rich. Don't panic you, don't panic you. There's the hub at the base, the uh, truck wheel hub at the base of Sir Cromelot. Oh, fire, that's bad steering by Jay. <laughs> And they could be in trouble, are they? Are they manoeuvrable? I think they are just about. And certainly, Shane, oh, no, he's got himself in trouble as well. On the flooding pit, the superficial chrome has been burnt off. All the controls are in the bottom there, though. I think they'll be OK. Oh, no, The boys are fine. The controls aren't working. They're in trouble, too. Sorry about that. We've got a technical problem. <laughs> oh, no, it's in them. I don't know what the technical problem is, but it's serious. And there is the evil ejector of the arena floor. We warned you. And there's the pit oh, of oblivion for Disco Inferno and the boys of five. Lapped up by Sir Killalot. Oh, well, there's no need to do that, man. Oh, there is, Jay, if you're immobilised, because in this you've got to keep on moving, otherwise we will rock you until the time was through for you. If you're getting down, you'll be in the pit of oblivion oh, no. right now. Cease. Disco Inferno dancing his last dance. Five given a bunch of fives by Sir Cromelot and Shane Lynch from Boyzone. <laughs> well, actually, it wasn't bad robot Listen, I don't even hear it. It wasn't bad uh, driving. It nah, was the, the, the robot gonna... that broke down. I know, we're not going to be sore losers. Shane, you, oh, actually, fair play. Sad. Fair play. Yeah, Having said that, though, you did have something against right. our barrier, because you kept driving into the barrier. Yeah, you no, it just it, it had a word with us before, and we just took a dislike in, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it's All been right. a really good day. All right, let's hear it for five! <laughs> Come here. Well, you showed them, didn't you? I was just a lucky run, it was, that's all. What was it with you and fire? I just wanted to show you that we were hot stuff, that's all. Well, you certainly are. You're through to the next round. You could, you could go all the way. Hey, up, lads. Let's hear it. Shane Lynch from Boys Own. The five lads. Broke what it happened? Down. It broke down. Sorry, lads. You know. It broke down. It did. So you're blaming the engineering? No, no. Just did it, broke Bad down. Bad luck. Some house robots, they're mean and nasty and they need sorting out. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Out of order. They were really upset. Babies, aren't they? 
<laughs> Little girls, that's all you are, Ooh, girls. <laughs> this is controversial, isn't it? Ooh, five no longer alive in Celebrity Robot Wars. Shane Lynch joins the Turner Girls and Vic Reeves in going through. Next up, the Battle of EastEnders, Natalie Cassidy. Or Sonia, of course, with Iron Ore and Adam Woodgett, Ian Beale and Pussycat. Look at that, it's like the black and white version of EastEnders, that, isn't it? Anyway, here I am with um, my new toy. This is Pussycat, believe me. It's not a Pussycat. Don't get too close, please. It's a very nasty blade up there, and um, we're not going to let you see which one it is yet. Um, now, I've been very lucky in getting this one. I've been told it is one of the best robots here. Um, I've also got, fortunately, one of the best drivers here at Robot Wars, Dave. Um, it's a bit of a complicated system. Instead of it having um, like a forward and a backwards and a left and a right, it's got um, a forwards, backwards, left and right on one thumb. And I think you're going to have to help me out and give me some tips here, Dave. Hiya, I'm Natalie, and this is my robot, Iron Ore. These are my two people who've made it. This is Gilbert. Hello. And this is Robert, Hi. and they've been doing a great job all day. This is my number plate. We've got a number plate! There's that one on it. I'm learning to drive at the moment. And on the side, I don't know where they're from, but we've got, like, learner stuff on it, you can see. Because so I'm learning to drive. This is the axe. This is my weapon on my robot. And um, once that comes off, apparently it's deadly, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, so all I want to do is beat everyone, really. The Pussycat Team with Adam. Oh, yeah. This is the man that got slung out of physics at school. Do you realise that? Yeah, sorry, fellas. I didn't tell you that bit, did I? <laughs> so your engineering skills are going to be useful to the team today, we hope. Yeah, I'm very good at making coffee, and if it gets damaged and it needs fixing, I'll go make the coffee. OK. Now, you're up against uh, your co-star, are you not, Natalie? Yeah, well, I mean, nothing much to worry about there. She's got a huge hammer with a sharp bit on the end. I Just mean... an enormous axe that'll come at you yeah. at about 90 miles an hour. No, uh, nothing to worry so about we've, at all. We've got a large spinny thing. That's technical, isn't it? Yeah, this is... A it, large spinny thing. It's a large spinny thing. So you're confident? Because you're a quietly, competitive yeah, man. Yeah, quietly confident. Um, the only thing that's worrying me is not so much losing to Miss Cassidy, but it's damaging their machine. <laughs> Natalie, what is going on? You're meant to be getting in that arena any second now. I cannot believe what is happening. <laughs> it's always me. It. It's always me, right? We was over there about five minutes ago, getting ready, sort it out, fine. Suddenly, the, the two front wheels sort of jam. <laughs> and we're nowhere. We're not even on the floor. We wasn't even doing anything. I was like, what is going on? <sighs> so, basically, what they've done is uh, Robert and Gilbert have sorted it out now and they're just putting it all back together, so hopefully she's going to be all right. Time for our soap stars to work themselves into a proper lather as we let the battle of the sexes begin! <laughs> Please welcome Adam Woodyatt and the Pussycat team. The electric-powered circular blade spinny thing will certainly mean it's me. Ow, wow, wow! For opponents, engineer and Dave's dad, Alan Gribble, hand-painted the aluminium and tough polycarbonate shell. A zero-turning circle could be crucial. Please welcome Natalie Cassidy and the Iron Ore team. A metre long, again with a zero-turning circle. It's electrically powered and most parts come from packaging machinery. The weapon's an axe. It runs on tracks as well as those buckled wheels. Roboteers, stand by. There's Pussycat with Adam at the controls. He's a massive Robot Wars fan. And Iron Ore and Natalie, Three, who's two, learning to drive. One. Activate. Hence the L plate, hence the Nat 1 on the back of Iron Ore there. Pussycat coming to meet Iron Ore. Very slow and steady progress. In comes Pussycat. We hope to see the blade with Adam at the controls. Doesn't seem to be working at the moment. In it comes again. There's a bag of fish and chips, by the way, attached to the blade. Oh! Well, they've had their chips already. From Ian Bill's shippy, of course. Natalie's handed over the controls there to Robert Grimm. Now, he's a Liverpool fan, and so is Adam, by the way. Well, I'm not too sure whether the blade is working, but they're on the attack again on Iron Ore. And Natalie... Oh, no! It certainly is. Now one has been crumpled and torn. No wonder she's got L plate stickers on there. Now that's dead metal, and it's grappled the axe of iron ore. I wonder if it'll be iron all washed up here. Well, they thought they ironed out their problems, but they haven't. Perhaps they're a little bit iron.
firm-fisted in their approach. It's not all over till it's over. It is now. I've always wanted to say that, by the way. Oh, and I think there's more mayhem. Brian Orr, look at this. Killalot came in and snapped off the axe. Just snapped it clean off. Oh, poor old Natalie and the Iron Ore team. And that is the pit of oblivion. It's a bit cool, isn't it? And it looks very much now as if Adam Woodgett, Ian Beale has won. Oh, no, she cries. Oh, yes! That's the beauty of Robot Wars, Natalie! You're in the pit. That was lucky. You have a good show, right? <laughs> It all gets turned into scrap metal. The Pussycat team go through with Adam Woodyatt. <laughs> nah. Sorry, it was not. It was just pure bullying, it wasn't, wasn't it? It wasn't my fault. I promise everyone, it wasn't. What, what happened? No, the battery ran out um, halfway through, and um, some horrible creature cut our axe off, our weapon, and axe went was on fire. Oh, well. You were toast in the end. Absolutely I mean, the thing was gone. smouldering, wasn't it? Look at it. I know. Can't believe it. I really liked it as well. I'd like to take it home, though, but there we go. Well, Good. Ad well Adam, done, Adam, Adam marches on. Well done. But I'm sure you can join his team now and make it an EastEnders team. What do you yeah. say, Adam? Can you just do one thing, though? Yeah. Can you make sure they connect the blade before we start the next match? I was going to say, your blade wasn't even working. How did you pull that victory off? Well, after one minute, we yeah. handed over because, I mean, the first minute with no weapon was, was a little bit worrying <laughs> against the house robots who, despite the fact we didn't go into any zones... Still came and got still, you anyway. Still came and had a little pop, oh, um, and we survived. It, mate. They, they break their own rules. Yeah. I can't wait for the next round. OK, then, let's hear it for Adam Woodyatt! <laughs> so, Natalie and the Grimm family are out, really. Aren't they? Well, the Grim family are out, but I said I'm going to win, <laughs> and now I'm going over to Adam's team <laughs> yes. to be um, not uh, girls versus boys, EastEnders versus whoever. Excellent. But can I just show you something? What's that? <laughs> That's what's happened to my number plate, and I so wanted to keep it. Oh. I'm gutted. Oh, That's not a good moment for your driving test, is it? No. Smashed up number it? plate. <laughs> So, are we happy about this decision? You know, yeah, I think Craig sort of right. forced that one on you, really, didn't well, he? I've just told you what, why I've done it. What was the reason? She wants to win. She's ruthless. <laughs> Is that why? <laughs> You're so desperate to win, you thought you'd come and join us? Yeah. A new EastEnders Albert Square Alliance. That'll have them talking, but Natalie Cassidy has deserted her otherwise sinking ship to join up with Adam. And now they'll face a chroma lot with Shane Lynch from Boys Own, Gemini and the Turners meet Vic Reeves, Alice and Giotto. The heartache's only just begun. Yes, it's the first of our celebrity semi-finals. Roboteers, stand by. This is Gemini. It's a cluster bot. It can divide in two and then join up as a team, like the Turner Girls. And Diotor from Dublin, with Vic Rees very much of the controls. Three, two, one. Taking great advice from Alice, though, his daughter. And the unique Diotor. Oh, very fancy glasses. Very lovely. The specs are removed immediately. He's been very go-ahead and aggressive with his driving, Vic. But now Diotor's on flames. The polka dot design may yeah, look pretty. It it's certainly flammable and vulnerable as well to a shove from underneath. What is crucial in Robot Wars is that machines should have a low ground clearance. Your tour has, but still, Gemini could get in underneath and flip it up and over. Right, no, let, let it slide. It's back over. That hair on top is made of a material called Kevlar, by the way. It's, it's, it's designed to mesh up and ruin other robots' machinery and blades and saws and so on. But now, one of the cluster bots of Gemini is flipped up there by Big Reeves. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That was cool, wasn't it? She's hopping as much as Gemini! I did notice she wasn't actually driving at the time. What's my guess, Oh, no! You're driving me! Oh, no, one of them's deactivated. Kieran there, Zulu, has spotted something I hadn't. And if that's true oh. and part of Gemini is deactivated, then they're out. If 
one half of Gemini is immobilised, then both halves are out. If one half is silent, then both halves are silent. Perhaps that goes for the Turner girls as well. I, I, I don't know. There's the pit of oblivion. And it looks to me as if Wendy and Anthea oh. are going to descend into that pit of oblivion. Well, oh, they gosh. don't know. They're on dead hook, so am I. There's Killer. Oh. There goes Gemini. And there goes their hope. Pit Reeves survives. Oh, that's adding insult to injury, isn't it? The evil injector. And now, look at this. This is Shunt, one of those four house robots, and the pair of them are in the pit. Cease. Uh, <laughs> you were just too nice. Just too <laughs> well, it's going to take more than some loo roll and some sticky back plastic to stick Gemini back again. Vic Reeves and Deator go through! Yes. Well done, lad. <laughs> Victory is ours. What happened oh. there? You had two robots for the price of one, and you still lost. I know. Did you notice <laughs> that when you were on your back, he flipped you back over? I know, yeah. Giving you Thank another you life. Yeah. yeah. Well, Thank no, there's actually nothing it to do with... It was Brian and Shane, actually, was what? feeling so generous. We'd have <laughs> left you there on your back. <laughs> <laughs> have you enjoyed it? I have thoroughly enjoyed it. We both have. It's been yeah, brilliant. Yeah, had a great time. And so Brian and Shane have been fantastic and the Gemini team. But... You made the semi-final. That's not bad. Next time yeah. you come back, you might make the final. Ladies and gentlemen, the way. let's hear it for the Gemini <laughs> team, the Turner sisters! <laughs> in the final, mate. I know, I'm filled with boiling adrenaline. Look at that. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just in there. Uh, it, furious. It, it's hot up here. Alex, I think when you get home, you should make him get in his garage and start building you a robot for next time round, all right? Yeah. That'll give him something to do with his Saturdays, won't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's hear it for Vic Reeves and Deer Talk! <laughs> so, the Gemini twins and the Turner sisters, they've gone out next up. Pussycat with the EastEnders Alliance and Sir Chromalot with Shane Lynch. Well, we've already found ourselves one finalist, but it's lonely out there in the arena. So let's find them someone to play with in the second of our celebrity semi-finals. Now, how are we feeling? We're sort of quietly confident. I mean, I, I can use the we now. Yes, now have a new teammate. Team we teammate. Are, uh, ready to do battle? Yes. Yeah. With you. I know. I'm just a peaceful man. I'm just, you know, go about myself. And if they win, they win. If they don't, nice one. <laughs> Stand by. Has the pussycat weapon been repaired? Can Adam and Natalie get their claws into something? Like Sir Chromalot with Shane, the part-time rally Three, driver. Two, one. Smashed up cars Activate. in Wales. He smashed up cars at Donington Park. Now, can Sir Chromalot cause problems? Oh, the saw blade Yay! is working! And that could be decisive here now. Look at the power of the blade. We knew it could be a decisive factor if they could get that electricity-powered blade working. And that immediately makes Pussycat the red-hot favourite here now. All the controls in Sacromalot, down there in that American truck wheel hub, and bits flying off that hub now. Across the arena floor, there's a special bulletproof plexiglass, by the way, around the arena, so the audience well-protected. Nimble controls. And they got his finger doing the talking there and the walking. Oh, Shane Lynch, Adam at the controls on oh, no, cat. Until then, <laughs> he flicked it up on the wheels, and I don't think he knew how to get it down, to be honest. So we got David Gribble at the controls, one of the best drivers in Robot Wars again. Yeah, Shane, Shane boys. And he's dancing about. I wonder why. I think he's stuck on the flames of fury. I don't think he can move off that sort of grid. Yeah, I'll let it go, Shane. Are they stuck on that grid? Well, I think they've been immobilised, yes! By the flames <laughs> of fury, there's nothing more he can do! He knows where they belong when all is said and done! Boy's own in the shape of Shane has been beaten by EastEnders. <laughs> on its side and smoking. <laughs> oh! <laughs> He's calling for help, I think. Perhaps he's calling for Ronan. 
to come and give him a hand. He's not here. It's on his side, Sir Cromelot. You've got Killalot in there with him, lifting it up with that... They're really just toying with it. Aren't they? Great, powerful claw can shred armour plating. And on... <laughs> to the ejector, the evil ejector. Hands up. Almost in surrender. Roly poly. And now the pit of oblivion waits. Are they cool? The thumbs down for Shane and the Sacromelot team. And all that glitters is not sold to me. Sold down the river, more like. <laughs> oh. Oh. The East Enders team saved up some serious beals on wheels, and the house robots had chrome a lot for tea. The East Enders team go through with Pussycat! <laughs> And see such a serious <laughs> mashing in ages on Robo Wars. Well, I was trying to give the crowd what they wanted to see. <laughs> You're just doing it for fun. It wasn't your robot, I suppose. Well, in all fairness, all due credit to the boys, Steve and Dave, the teammates. You know, uh, fair play to them for letting me have a bash. Um, I can see why they wanted their, their blade to be working, because it just destroyed it, man. It is devastating, that Yeah, blade, it took our it? drills out, it took our spikes out, and that was it. We've just had it, man. Well done, you've enjoyed yourself. Ah, it was brilliant, absolutely. Spot on. You didn't make the final, but at least you beat five. Uh, well, there's always one good thing about the day, isn't there? Let's hear it for Shane Lynch and Cromelot! <laughs> well done, Shane. Good night. And you were driving that really well. I didn't back up until the house robots got, got in. Oh. I didn't do I, it. I was just cheering. I, I was well, just no, I, helping him out. I had a look when we were out the back and I found where the kill switch was on them on their robot. So I kept going for just to the right of the green car. Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody downstairs said, I bet you can't get it. So I thought I'd try. Yeah. You never got it. But... No, I didn't get it, but never mind. It was all right. <laughs> hey, you're in the final. Yeah, can't wait. Joe, I'll bring on Vic Reeves. <laughs> Sample metal carnage. Yes. Let's hear it for the EastEnders team and Pussycat! <laughs> Where's the drill bits gone? Chopped all them off to start with. No, I've done all this stuff around here. I think so. Jeez. Really want to thank you for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Was that when we got stuck together? My little boy's not watching these enders anymore. I oh, know. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> want this for getting rid of you in fingers. <laughs> Ian Beals had his enemies in East Enders. Now Adam's got his new enemies. Pussy got through to Gromelot out. And of course, now they meet Diotor and Vic Reeves in this the final. This has been my all-time favourite celebrity bash, but now just two robotic revellers remain. With Diator, a man who's proved that he's not just good at shooting stars, he's good at booting stars out the arena as well. And with Pussycat, the nastiest duo to come out of Albert Square since a pair of Pat's earrings. Give it up for Natalie Cassidy, Adam Woodyard and Vic Reeves! <laughs> Stand by. This, the Celebrity Robot Wars Grand Final with Diotor from Ireland, Vic Reeves and there, Adam Woodgett, Natalie Cassidy and Three, Pussycat. Two, one, activate. And their control of these robots has been splendid off goes to flying bad and the pancake and the buns. Here's the four. Oh, no, a Excellent. Off goes the polka dot skirting. But I wonder if that's going to cause them problems because it's trapped around the blade. Try and burn the material off. Sure. Oh, that's a risky tactic. Try and burn the material off. Off come the specs again. So we've now got the myopic Diotor. Trying to burn that fur off the blade. It's smouldering. It's still trapped around the blade, though. Right at the very hub. Diotor, meanwhile, in trouble from Dead Metal. Whose fur brained idea was the Polka Dot Boys? Just so, so unfair. Shunt is in. Back comes Pussycat. I think Diotor has a major problem. This is Dead Metal with the pincers and the house robots. Certainly feel, and I've been told your tour has been immobilized. They can go in for the kill. Oh, poor little Alice. Big 
Nice. And then he pulls out. And Kieran trying to console her in there. Oh. And smoke coming out of. Oh. No, we've had it now. Go on, watch. This is Gillilot against the Artur. Back to the reality. Oh, we're still moving. And the bludgeoning. Oh. And the evil ejector. Alice, I'm not taking any pleasure in this. Oh. Well, I am. Where is the justice in that? Oh, damn, man. Sorry, Vic. Sorry, boys. <laughs> Down in the pit with you! And we have the last laugh. Cease. Senders team and Pussycat have obviously won, but let's look at some of the highlights of that fantastic battle. Brilliant stuff. Pussycat on the attack. There goes the, the, the pancake straight away, but that was crucial. So the blade was put out of action. Then Diotor on fire. In came the house robots. It was immobilised. Then the damage started. Dead metal. Shunt. The axe. And the evil ejector. And the end. Well, a fantastic final. The East Enders posse obviously won it. Vic. Yes. How'd you feel? L Little oh. Alice was in tears. Robbed. I know we were robbed, but she's not watching East Enders again anyway, so that's half the audience got. <laughs> what went wrong? I mean, the initial crash into well, we the beginning. There and and, and we, we wrapped some of our fur around, as you can see. That stopped the, uh, the bacon slicer. The pussycat got a yeah. fair ball. So, like, we, we deactivated him. Then, I think it was Matilda, someone came in and just rammed <laughs> through our tyre. We could do nothing but go around in circles. We did it. Robbed by the house robots. You, have you had a good time? Yes, I've got um, Robert's thumb now. <laughs> which will be very swollen tomorrow, but it's been treated. It's been great to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, Vic Reeves and Dieto! <laughs> well, you won it. What was your tactic? I mean, you, you did really well. Um, the tactic was to, to win and steer clear of the pit and steer clear of the house robots, but nobody warned us about this stuff. I mean, it's better than chain mail, it's better than anything we've had. It completely stopped the it blade, just, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we had to keep trying to burn it off and we just, we couldn't get it off. Anyway, right. <laughs> there is your award. Show it to the crowd and enjoy it. EastEnders and Pussycat! Well, they may have stars on their dressing room doors, but it won't stop the battle scars on Robot Wars. Bye-bye. Robots is dangerous and shouldn't be attempted without great care. To receive our safety guidelines, you must first join the Robot Wars Club. Send a cheque or postal order for £12.95 to Robot Wars, London W1A 3AR. Members will also receive a badge, video and club magazine. If you build a qualifying robot, your membership fee will be refunded. For more information, call our hotline.